Okay guys, welcome to Big Laws Official. Today we have a big treat for you. I have the one and only, newly crowned Britain's Strongest Man, British powerlifting record holder, Graham Hicks on the line. How you doing, buddy? How we doing, mate? You okay? Very good. You got to see yourself winning Britain's Strongest Man the other night? 11 months yeah. after winning it? <laughs> yeah, it's, been a, it's been a long time coming, but uh, I think we've seen most of the footage, obviously, online, but it's nice to see it all together and... You know, it was nice to see the ending with obviously holding Tyler and my wife being there. It was a uh, quite a touching moment for me, really. Yeah, so it's been a long, a long time coming. You've always been kind of there or thereabouts. I think how many times have you been on the podium now? Uh, I've come second twice and third once. Yeah, so nice to kind of step up and, and win it. And you know, you thoroughly deserved it. You were definitely. The man to beat that, um, or this year, isn't it? It's still, it's so confusing. I, I hate the timeline. It feels like so long ago now. Like so much has happened. Obviously, you've done the powerlifting, and you know they're already, you know, people are talking about Britain's Strongest Man 2020 now. So it's such a weird kind of sensation. I remember when I won it, and it, you're waiting till the end of the year to watch it on TV. You got about a month to enjoy it, and then there's a new champion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a long process, but we understand why. Um, obviously you've got all the comps through the year and then it gets better viewings at this time of year, that kind of thing but um, it is what it is I, I, I set out pretty much years ago to tell myself that one day I, I need, I'm going to win that title and I've won it um, yeah. whether I'll go back and try again don't know well, you don't, <laughs> you're not going back to 2020 both of us are out this year, so we can just sit back and and, and kind of be fans and, and watch from the side. And that's one of the reasons yeah. I, I got you on, on today. I want to talk a little bit about this up-and-coming Britain's Strongest Man. But before yeah. we do that, I want to talk about your year. Because obviously it started great winning the British title. You were the most consistent. You performed brilliantly. Very, very deserving winner. And then you kind of changed your focus from the strongman onto some powerlifting targets. And... You absolutely destroyed the British total and got very close to the world record on the the raw with wraps, you know, powerlifting record, which at the time was Melnichov's record of one thousand and forty kilos. Is that correct? Well, one thousand one hundred and forty. Yeah, sorry, one thousand one hundred and forty. And you you hit one thousand one hundred, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In your first ever powerlifting competition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not bad, mate. That's not bad at all. Even yourself have said to me in the past, you'd, you'd, you'd make a good powerlifter. And you just know when you do strongman for a long time, you pick up bad habits, you neglect certain things. And, you know, like I never benched to my chest in training for probably six years. And I avoided squatting with a bar for maybe the last five years. Yeah. Um, so them two things are very, very big things for me, especially getting under the bar. Um, I had a probably a four month prep, and I only achieved a, an actual low bar position three weeks out from the comp, and I tried every week. Yeah, it's so. well, it's one thing, kind of you know. I've said to a lot of the strongmen before because I've done a little bit of powerlifting in the past, and you know we all know what we can deadlift in strongman comps where hitching's allowed, straps are allowed, you know, benching. You see guys in the gym, they can bounce the weights off their chest and we can you know we've got the strength to handle these big weights but the way you have to perform lifts in a powerlifting competition is quite strict you know I've, I've been in comps where if you've got the the, the wrist strap and the, the 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 hoop is on your thumb you'll fail a lift if you've got the wrong <laughs> socks on you'll fail a lift if your foot moves you'll fail a lift so there's all these little things that we don't have to think about in strongman obviously in strongman it's just lift the weight but the, the way you lift it in a powerlifting competition is just as important as the weight sometimes it's a different. It's obviously a dis different discipline. It's still a strength sport, but it's totally different discipline. Oh, uh, no, I, I think that the, 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 the big difference for a strong man, you have to be able to do so many different things. So we tend not to specialize as much. We're just very, very well rounded and strong. In powerlifting, yeah. you have to be technically superb when you start going to those, you know, crazy high high numbers. You know, you and me can muscle up. 300 kilo squat for reps with bad technique if we wanted to no problem but when you start going to 400 kilos plus if your technique's not spot on you fail the lift and every, every you know the muscles yeah. all need to work together you need to kind of keep everything moving correctly and and that's where the power lifters are really impressive is that they they're very very highly skilled in certain movements and you've managed to you know destroy the british record and get close to the world record with with four months training so 
I think another year's training in it and you know you could really really legitimately and i've said this to you many times we've spoken many yeah. times but you've got a legitimate chance on chasing that world record which i think has actually been beaten recently hasn't it uh you can have it for a while till i take it it's fine. <laughs> dan bell is called he's uh, an american he got uh 1142.5 i believe that's that's impressive with a 480 plus squat so um the squat for me was the big thing. I mean, so tell I've us, what, what, what did you? What, what did? What numbers did you lift in the end? I got my opener was four hundred, then it was four twenty, then four forty. You got all three on the squat, yeah, and then all bench. within quite comfortable as well. Yeah, I mean, before I flew to Australia, I was out in Australia for two weeks. Before I left, I had a four hundred kilo best squat. Yeah, or four, four or five. Sorry, that I did with Tom. Yeah. And then uh, just with the technicalities that we talked about just before, uh, Bass was showing me what to improve with my technique. And we did 420 in the gym. Taking that into the comp with me, I got 440. Um, knowing that now, maybe with a better build-up, we'll get, probably get 460. You know, it's it wasn't really a strength issue. It was just learning the position, getting in the position, yeah. and uh, oh. trying to master it with very minimal... Uh, practice yeah yeah. I, I, I you know everyone said how well you did and you know you really did but I think we all kind of feel with a year specific training it's going to make a big difference because like you say there's more to come in the squat there's definitely more on the bench you kind of underperformed on the bench to be honest yeah um, I, I struggled I, I found that um, I just kept go- I couldn't get going in the warm ups I mean I had a very stressful day the day before um, you, lost, you lost all your luggage didn't you well we decided that we'd get an early flight. So my wife booked us an early flight, 6 a.m. It was like the plan was to get there, get in the room. I can nap, I can chill, just have a day of chilling. Yeah. The complete opposite happened. We got there, we didn't get our luggage, and we just spent the whole day because where our apartment was and where the reception was that ran the apartment blocks that we were in was a 10 to 15-minute walk away, up and down hill. So... Mm. I'm weighing over 160 kilos, like a lifetime weight PB. Yeah, I think you've got heavier than I've ever everywhere you? with her, and then we're having to phone the <laughs> airport who consistently lied to us all day about where our bags were. Um, and then we got a bag delivered at 7 p.m., and then the reception closed, uh, and the bag wasn't mine. Oh, no. <laughs> Jeez. So I went completely nuts at this uh, driver, you know, bless him, it wasn't his fault, but I needed someone to shout at, and yeah. uh, in the end, we went to go for a meal with uh, Sebastian and the one of the, he had the organiser of Big Dogs, and then he got on the phone to the airport, and I think the, the bag came at like one o'clock in the morning. Jesus. So I slept then after that, yeah. you know, um, so that... Could have took its part on me. I mean, I felt good on the day, but I just felt very off on it's, the deadline. It's just people. not what you want, you know. You're, you're leading to a big competition. I mean, that's happened to me before a very minor competition. I was competing in the Faroe Islands. My bag got lost, you know. I eventually got my stuff, literally, as I was driving to the, the venue. I had to kind of take a detour, pick up my, 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 my bags that had been sent on a coach, so Obviously, I, it's a nice relief, yeah. but at the same time... It's very it's stressful a, that you're thinking much. about it all the time. You want your equipment, you know. And, you know, the, all you can do is try and stay relaxed, but it's very, very difficult because all you want to do is be in the hotel, chilling out, thinking about what you've got to do, whereas you're, you're chasing people, you're ringing up people, you know, you're all over the place, and it's just, it's just not ideal prep. But you cope yeah. with it, and, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully next time you don't have any of those issues, you get better prep, and if you can put 20 kilos on the on the squat 10 kilos on the on the the bench and i think you you, you failed your last deadlift didn't you yeah i mean and that was that was more grip issue than than, than back strength warming up i knew i had a problem um with my my right hand that's holding the phone now but the the rotation that i have in my hand maybe due to just uh bicep tear years ago but it's worse than my left so my external rotation is not very good but for whatever reason on that day it was almost non-existent so 
when I grabbed the bar, or how I normally grab the bar, and the practice grabbing the bar was left hand first, which was my overhand, get a position, underhand round, and then pull it. But what kept happening was as I go around to grab my underhand, because it was, wasn't was really an easy job for me, the bar moved. I grabbed the bar to pull the bar in towards me, and I, I found that I was only really holding it with like three fingers. Yeah. These last two fingers weren't really gripping the bar, and uh, I pulled 350 in the warm up room, and I said to Bass, I've got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> because I, uh, I pretty much. I locked it out, but it was going out my hand. Yeah. I said, uh, "This is, we're going to have a problem here. And I pulled 380, felt good. Pulled 390, felt good. Went for 402, which would have won me the, the comp, but I lost it as high as you can get a deadlift yeah. uh, before you get a down command, basically. Um, you know, thinking back, I should have probably gone 380, 402. Um, I don't think I got a grip issue. I just think it was it was that whole it's setup. One of those days. Um, and since I've been back, I've been grabbing my underhand first, and then spinning round and just grabbing the overhand. I haven't really had the same sensation, but again, I'm not lifting the same weight. So, yeah. but the, the, just, the, you know, the thing is, you know, with, but, um, with things not being perfect, you went there and you hit one thousand one hundred kilos, and yeah, you, you know, yeah. you know, people talk about what they're capable of, and, and a lot of the time, people are, you know, they're, they're making up stories. But you legitimately have more in the squat. You were a fraction away from being given that deadlift. We all know you can bench press more, so th that has to give you confidence that, that the records within within grasp. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the prep for big dogs did feel a bit rushed because, you know, I'm 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 trying to hit numbers that were programmed, but also learn the technique, which, you know, was was quite a challenge. Um, I learned a hell of a lot. I'm quite a quick learner, um, and I'm looking forward now, you know, next year to just sort of starting a, a, a prep, probably well before I even decide to do a show, and just get going, yeah. and then, uh, you know, get things a little bit more easy. You know, like when I log, I don't think about right, pick it up, hold the handle there, squat down here. I don't. It's just it's it just, just a natural. natural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I've done that many reps on the damn thing, so. Yeah, you know, it'll be the same with squatting and benching. Um, it'll just be a, a natural movement. Definitely. And that's when I, we'll see what potential I have. So what's going to be next for you, competitive, uh, com competition-wise? Um, I was going to keep it strong quiet. Strong really, but, uh, <laughs> maybe the World Loglift Championships. You're going to look yeah. at the World Loglifting Championships. That's cool. I wasn't sure. I, you know, I, I know after last year, you sort of felt like you underperformed almost. But, um, I, yeah, I really saw my saw, so yeah, I really saw my ass last year. Is the best way to put it. Um, um, I aimed for two fourteen, but then just how training was going and the shape I turned up in, I, I generally thought two twenty minimum. Have a good go at the world record, and just didn't sort out my shoulder mobility drills before I did the log because everything was all a bit rushed, a bit claustrophobic, and I just remember going out. On my op opening lift, very not confident. Um, did it, walked back, and like Kim would ask me, how did it feel? And I was like, it was shit. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that didn't change. Yeah. 200 was the same. 214 was the same. Everything felt bad. So to almost get 220 with the way things were going, again, you know, like, that's down to me. I was there early. I should have just warmed up and I would never have been rushed. But sometimes you get there too early, you don't want to do enough and you lose track of time. And, you know, by the time I got kitted up and we're getting ready, it was time to warm up and there was everybody around the log, obviously people watching, staff walking past. Um, it just really felt like it was out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And, um, yeah, if I'm going to do it again, I'll just make sure that I, I give myself plenty of time to be ready. Well, I look forward to seeing it, mate. I, um, you know, always support you and I know you can do it. Just depends which Hicksy turns up sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not the strongest mentally. You know, I can, I can. Uh... I think you've improved a lot over the years. I remember a few years back, you were really bad at doubting yourself. Whereas now you, you look, 
you have a much stronger aura about yourself. You sort of, you walk into a building and you can tell there's a lot of self-confidence. You know that you're a strong man. <laughs> whereas, whereas earlier on in your career, I, I reckon I could have got into your head and beaten you in a competition. Whereas now, yeah, I, I, don't think, I don't think people could now. You know, no, you're not no. gonna, you're not gonna let little things or, or people saying stuff and stuff like that. You, you don't let that affect you. You know, you you know you're strong. You know what you're good at. You know what you're not so good at. And, and it, it seems to me like you're focusing on what you are really good at right now, which statically you are absolutely one of the strongest men on the planet. It's strange because like um, I was never known for that. Uh, I was always known for my oh, speed. You were an under one hundred and five. It's ridiculous that you're heavier yeah. than me now. <laughs> and it just it just develops, you know. Um, I just got stronger every year, and it hasn't really slowed down. So, uh, I do think I'm going to do the log lift. I have my invitation. Just, I'm going to go on a holiday um, this weekend. We're going to have two weeks. I'm going to do no gym, rest, enjoy my time with the family. So you guys are um, away for Christmas, yeah? Yeah, we go away every Christmas, and then I'm just going to try and, you know, just just see if I can get this log lift into my training. Because obviously, the main reason. For no strong man this year is just not being able to train the same amount of days. Uh, uh, there's, there's all sorts of reasons for that, but basically at the moment I'm sort of tied down to three days a week. So um, we'll just see how that develops. I'm sure I can make room and and take it from there. And if it all goes well, I'm going to go to log lift, and I'll only go if I'm going to do something very good. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, I'm not going to just make up numbers and look ordinary. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. I think um, you know, that was the, the you know a big part of the, like the Brits. I mean, I can't disrespect other athletes and expect to be able to walk in having not trained anything. And, uh, it'll be me that'll be the made the laughing stock at the end of the day. So um, yeah, I, I, don't, I, I don't think people I mean. realise that sometimes as well. You know, I, I I'm in that boat with you. Obviously, recovering from a torn Achilles. And people are seeing my training now and they'll be like, oh, you're, you're back training. Why aren't you doing Britons? I can stand there and I can squat and I can deadlift, but I still can't do a calf raise on my bad leg. I can't, you know, explode up off my feet to do a log. I can't move with weights. I, you know, I can shuffle around with 300 kilos on my back and maybe beat an amateur. But when you're going against the best guys in the world or the best guys in the country or whatever it is, you need to be at your best. And I've got no interest in going somewhere and being, you know, 70%. I don't, yeah, I don't mind people beating me, but I don't want to perform way under what I'm capable of, and I'm sure you just feel the same. It's funny you say that because obviously you know you you were at UKs, and when I went away and got my foot looked at the day after when I dropped that York on it, he said, "Oh, it's fine," um, but I was in serious pain, and then I got it looked at again two weeks later, and they said I'd fractured it. Yeah. And, you know, the way it's healed, the way that my mind is always trying to protect that foot. You know, I've I've developed, like, bad habits of limping on one leg. And I think even now I'd be scared to, to run fast or yeah. do a yoke. Or I can't do a full calf raise myself, you know. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the, it, I mean, you know, when your feet are flat on the ground, it's fine. I'm, yeah. I'm feeling like, you know, strength's coming back when I squat, when I deadlift, but it's that extension, it's those explosive movements. Like, I wouldn't want to do a tyre flip right now, something like that, where it's well, a yeah, fast, uh, explosive <laughs> movement. Because obviously, uh, we, have a, we have a physio, actually, at work, and what hurt me the most was walking. Um, <laughs> I was really struggling with walking, and um, when I just walk for five minutes, I might my foot might throb for an hour, two mm. hours. So I ended up getting like a temporary car park pass at work, which parked me right close to the building. <laughs> and then in the evening, people see me squatting and I'm doing this big dog's breath, but yeah. I can't walk anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so, weird, isn't it? It's weird how the body works and you can cope with certain things. Yeah. You yeah. know, I, I'm still a long way from being able to do strongman. It's, it's frustrating, but I, I'm doing what I can in the gym. And, and I know it's the same for you. It's, it is weird because there's certain things that are quite comfortable now. And there's some things that are still, you know, I was on a, a seated calf raise the other day. I had 10 kilos on there. I was struggling to get 10, 12 reps out. And then this girl comes and puts 20 kilos on and makes it look easy. I'm just like, oh, man. <laughs> well, I, you know, as strong as I am at the moment, I, uh, I, I had to go some stones with Felix. And you go on your toes with stones. Yeah, you do. And I couldn't figure out why I was struggling. And then when I thought about it that, that night, I thought it's because my heels were so planted. Yeah. That it was it was making it hard for me, uh, you know. 
and it's not a strength issue. That's almost like a body protecting me from hurting my foot again issue. It's yeah, a very, much. very odd sensation. It is tough. It's, uh, anyway, but enough about our injuries and about um, your year. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about 2020 Britain's Strongest Man. There's an awful lot of talk about it already on the internet. There's no Graham Hicks to defend the title. All the talk nope. is about the Stoltman brothers and Bish. Um, and a few other guys as well, actually. There's, you know, there's talk of um, Luke Richardson, young lad yeah. who's, who's really stepped up this year. Ben Brunning after his amazing performance in Manchester. And then you've got like the old, old boys, Felix in there. Terry Hollands is looking very, very good this year. And a whole bunch of up and coming young British guys. So I want to get your picks of who you think is going to do well, who you think to look out on certain events, um, and just who you think will, will be challenging for the title. So it was a bit like last year. There was no Eddie, and everyone was saying, oh, there's about eight people that could win this thing. And I sat down in the interview, and I was like, I couldn't disagree more. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I said, there's only, I actually picked, I said, it was me, you, and Bish. Yeah. Um, so nobody over than those three can win this title t- today. You know, and uh, I'm going with the same sort of attitude. I don't think anyone can win it apart from Stoltman's and Bish this year. Um, I'm 100% behind dis- that. That is discrediting any other guys. You've only got five events. They're strong across the board. Bish is probably the most experienced. Um, but then, you know, like people like Terry, they could probably excel at four events. Yeah. And you've got log. So to podium with one bad event over five events. I know Tom did it last year. So just just quickly, uh, just quickly, let's go through the events. The events is, is log ladder for it's the yeah. log medley. Um Conan's. Conan's, uh Deadlift. Axel Deadlift. And then you've got a medley which is a duck walk, two sandbags and a tire. And then the stones. And then the stones. So you you know like so I I, would I look think. at the, the the same three guys that you're talking about. I'm looking at Bish and the two Stoltmans. And that, like you said, that's not to disrespect anyone else. I, I, right. I genuinely think there's going to be an amazing battle for fourth and fifth place to, to try and, you know, maybe get qualifying spots for World's Strongest Man. And I, I think that battle is going to be quite wide open. Um, yeah. I actually, like you say, I think Terry could do very, very well this year. He's sort of, he looks like he's come back really well. He looks in a good place mentally. Well, Pulled uh, that 400 at the Masters and it was e- easy. You know, and that, that's been the that's best. That's the best his deadlift's been in a long time. Yeah, which, you know, for a guy to get his strength back, who's all of a sudden very fit, you know, deadlift for reps, just excuse me, I'm just going to plug my phone in before I lose you. No worries. Yeah. Deadlift for reps is very good for him. Um, well, the deadlift is good. The co- 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 circle is really good. He's amazing at things like duck walk. You know, I've never seen anyone look and just, you know, I, I remember going against him in one of my first Britain's Strongest Man on Duck Walk and he just left me for dead. He's got I long... I think he was the reason energy. you fell over because you were trying to keep <laughs> that, that wasn't even the top comp I'm talking about. That was a different one. I, I hate Duck Walk. I'm, <laughs> guys like you and me, we're shorter. We've got big, huge legs. It's not great for Duck Walk. Yeah. But, um, but Terry's got longer legs. He's much taller and he moves extremely well with those type of things. He's great at Conan's. He's great at Stones. The only thing for me that's going to stop him competing against the top, top guys is he'll drop points on the log. And there's a lot of good log lifters. That's the thing now. I mean, <laughs> there's not many guys. I mean, you can sort of pick who's going to struggle. You know, Felix will struggle. Terry will struggle. And then throughout the board, everyone's half decent at log now. Well, there's, um, there's so many good log. Like you've got Aaron Page, who's really good at log. You've got Ryan England, who's really good at log. Yeah, you know, Mark, these are guys that probably won't challenge for the top, but they're going to take points off Terry. Mark Steele, he's really good at log. Um, yeah, you yeah. Know, there's, there's a whole list. Both, st- I mean, uh, Luke's not far behind you on log. You know, he's really yeah. improved on log. I, I, I expect him to win the log. He, yeah, he's yeah. someone that I think can finish it. The, 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 thing, the, thing, the guys like Terry and Bish, I think they're very smart and they're going to try and do a certain amount fast. And I think it will depend on how some of those stronger pressers do, whether they try and save their energy to get the heavier ones or they're going to yeah. go quick as well. Yeah. And that could be what it comes down to. Yeah, you know, I mean... If, if I was competing, I'd be doing three fast and then maybe having a crack at the, the, the last one, whereas I think some people will plod through. Like I did um, a, log for, for a log medley against Ryan England, for instance, in the UKs a few years back. And Ryan's a stronger log presser than me, but I beat him because I was quicker. Right, I 
That's it. And, did you, and you know, you know, guys like Bish could do something like that. He's not the strongest log lifter, but he'll understand what he needs to do. It yeah. just depends, I think, you know, how many guys are capable of getting that last log now. It was only, I think it was only you and um, Eddie that have ever done it before. I've never done did you a not? log memory, no. You did it when um, Eddie won his last title? But I I was the only one that attempted the 200. Oh, yeah, he went after, did he? And he just did the the 180 faster. Yeah, yeah. I was actually quite slow in between because I knew we'd be the only person to get one eighty. Yeah, um, yeah. But the thing, the thing yeah. is, you know, other than maybe Luke, I don't really see that many guys being able to do the whole run. So it's going to come down to being fast. I think a good thing. I mean, obviously, it's organisers. It's up to them. But um, it'd be good if they put six events in these days. You know, because everyone's so good now. I, I've been saying this for a long time. I think World's Strongest Man needs like ten events, not five events. Or... Yeah, I just like. If you could just put, I don't know what the event would be, but it might just mix things up a bit more because I agree. everyone's getting good at everything. Um, and then you have people like Luke Richardson who, you know, you want to talk about who's coming in hungry and can nick points off these guys. Mm-hmm. And I just think a six event show, if it's run well and fast, would work well because all these things are head to head. Um, I think, you know, having five sometimes it's. it's we want six. I know the athletes might wish for five. I, I think for, for big, big competitions, you need more events to really see who's the best. You know, to, yeah. to see, like, if you look at other sports, the, the the major kind of competition, say something like, you know, tennis, for instance, the big competition, they play more sets. You know, yeah. snooker and, and darts and stuff like that, the big contests, they play more legs and sets. It's, um, you know, the, the, the lesser important competitions, they tend to have less events or, or less kind of, you know, sets and those type of things. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I, I, for for one thing, at Worlds, you definitely need more than five events to decide the world's strongest man. But I agree with you, something like this, you know, six to eight events would be really, you know, perfect. But obviously, time restraints and stuff like that, this is a one-day show, so it's a bit different to say world's strongest man where you could do a lot more events. I, I do understand that side of it. But I, I agree with you. to, to really Because if you look at the British guys this year in all the Giants live shows, they've all beaten each other. Yeah. You know, you, you got you get one show, so, you know, it could be you that wins it. The next one, Luke can be the highest placed Brit, and then Tom can be the highest placed Brit, and then Felix, and, you know, it, it changes every single show. So, yeah. and, and that, that's good, and it's exciting, and it makes for, for an interesting competition. But um, I, I do agree that if, if we're really going to find who is the best, you need a tougher, not tough is probably the wrong word, but a, 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 you need more variety in those events. Yeah. Because in Strongman, as you know, you can, you know, I could set up a competition in my gym and beat every other British guy quite comfortably, and you could do the same. You know, it's, it's. I mean, I, I don't know. I think that arena, they should have. Why don't they put like a sack toss in there, or you know, there's, there's just so many things they could stick in there now. Well, um, there, there are so many events, aren't there? And it, it, some, yeah. it sometimes seems like it gets a little bit repetitive. It does, but you know, I think it's the, the reasons for that is is. Because they want to find the best strongman, and it's, and when you, when you talk strongman, you want log, deadlift, stones, and then fitness, um, and that kind of is what it evolves around every year. Yeah, but I'd like to see some variety. Like I think you need an overhead, but you can have a different overhead each year. It doesn't have to be log, you know. Oh. It can be an axle. It can be a Viking press. It can be a dumbbell. It can be the safe lift. You know, there's lots of things you can put in. And I don't think you need to have a deadlift in every competition. I don't think Atlas stones need to be in every competition. I think you can do a similar event, but mix it up a little bit. And you know, you think of when we watched strongman when we were younger and kind of you know before we were involved in it. That I think there was a bit more variety in what they did, especially at World Strongest Man. Um, yeah. But, yeah, never really saw the same events. They always mixed it up. Yeah, I, and I like seeing a bit of variety, you know, especially because, like you said, we do powerlifting to see who's good at benching, squatting, deadlifting, that type yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know, uh, the strong man, you need some variety. And whether it is just one competition's, you know, log for reps, then axle for max, you know, axle for reps, dumbbell, Viking press, you know, and or change the deadlift. At the moment, it seems to just be deadlift for max, Deadly for reps, <laughs> you know. Yeah, let's yeah. let's put a squat in there just to throw it up a bit differently. Or, or... Well, I mean, put a squat in there, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> so would I. <laughs> I, I, I actually just... said to I said to Colin, I said because he said he phoned me up and said, uh, I mean, I, I'm going to tell everyone this. I don't think you'll mind. 
He said, I had a dream last night. He said, um, I dreamt that you phoned me up and you, and you came back to Britain's last <laughs> minute and won your title back. I said, oh, cool. I said, that'll only happen if you put a squat in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did he, uh, he, didn't, he didn't budge with the events then? No, well, he doesn't really select the events, does he? And it's all set now, so... I've I, I got to say, I, I do like that about the Giants Live guys. Once they do set their events, they don't change them. No. You know, so no. everyone's got time to prepare. And I, I think it's going to be a great contest between the, those three. And, and like I said, I think Luke Richardson, uh, Badger, uh, Terry, there, there's going to be a good battle for those guys, kind of uh, fourth and fifth That's, place. On paper, if you go on paper, Tom's going to win. But, you know, um, he's still young. He has a tendency to go up. Um, and... I just think Luke will have the head to win, really. I think I just think it's his time. I don't know. I mean, I'd I, like I, him up. I think yeah. both great guys. I, 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 I must admit, I, I think I would like to see Luke win it. I think yeah. um, I think he's got a great chance, and that's nothing against anyone else. He's been around, you know, a long time. He's been close. He's had a great yeah. year this year. You know, Tom's younger. He's got so much more. Time and the thing is, Luke, but... he's very underrated, and I, I had that my whole strongman career. Last year, people were, you know, not everyone was really picking me, and you know, I've always been underrated. And Luke's the same. Now he's a bit underrated, and it'll just be nice for him to pop up and win it. Um, I think he's got, a, like you say, I mean, he did amazingly in Dubai recently. He's had, he's had a great year. His confidence is high. He's getting stronger and stronger. I think, and then obviously a bish, you know, like I competed at one hundred and five with bish. I remember, like I, I remember the skinny it's... picture of you and bish, and, and now looking yeah. <laughs> it, it'd be great, you know, if, if he wins it. He's come from one hundred and five. It's basically, it's almost like starting at Sunday League football and working your way up to to playing for Man United. You know, yeah. it's uh, it's that fairy tale. It, when people come to me and say, "Well, you know, how far can I go?" and it's like, well. I started at a very beginning, yeah. you know, and I, I never even pictured competing with you guys, never alone, like, winning the title. Yeah. Um, ten years in the making, and, you know, Bish is the same. I think he started at similar time as me. Yeah. So, you know, it'd be nice for him to win it. Well, it's going to be a great battle, you know. We could kind of probably go on about a number of the guys competing. Is there anyone in the lineup that you think people haven't seen that they should look out for? The obvious, the obvious one is Luke. Obviously, um, he's not done any strong man, but trains with Darren and statically is is strong. I'm looking forward to seeing his deadlift because his deadlifts come on immensely. But he's a very good. He's also anyway. some weight on, which affects your fitness as well. So it'll be interesting to see how he does on the deadlift. I, I'm, I'm interested to see how he does. There's a lot of talk about him, you know. There's a lot of hype, and he, he is a great lad. You know, we've both met him, know him pretty well. He, he is a, an extremely strong lad as well, and has a bright future. He's, he's kind of quite level-headed with it as well. He's sort of, you know, takes it in his stride. He's very focused. I, I just feel the top three guys will be a bit too much for him this year. I think they've got that experience. Yeah. You know, Tom is so naturally good at some of those events. He's so athletic, um, whereas. Luke, and this isn't um, in a disrespectful way, but he's probably a bit more like you in that you're going to have to work a bit harder to get to that kind of level. You know, Tom's just genetically gifted, whereas, yeah. you know, you're, you're as strong as you are, you're, you're height restricted. <laughs> in, in You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you've had to work harder at things like Atlas Stones, you know, those type of things. And I think maybe yeah. he's just going to need a little bit more time to mature and get that experience because as good as he is, he's not had that much experience at high level. I'm going to pick the top five. I'm going to pick Luke, Bish, Tom, Luke, Richardson, and then Badger. Really? That's my top five. Interesting. I wish I could put Terry in there somewhere because I just know that I like, I like, I almost like it when people write Terry off because I know he gets a bee in his bonnet and he wants to prove <laughs> everyone wrong. So. Well, I've, I've, got, I've got to admit, I, I, I sort just, of, have a soft yeah. spot for the older guys now, kind of being the older guy that's trying to come back sometimes. But I, no, I, I, if he could just score some points on that log, then you know he'll be chasing the podium. No, absolutely, it's just I, I, I agree. Head, if, I if, he, if he can I score enough points on the log, so he can't beat right now. That's the only person I can I think of who he can't beat on log. But I'm sure there's other guys. 
I, I can't think of top of my head. But it, like you say, it's a strong lineup of Loglin. There's not many guys in that lineup that can't do 180. But no, no, yeah, that's where the standards going now. Yeah. Oh, I remember having the British record at 190. <laughs> I actually pressed 190. Do you remember that day? But I fell over. I've got a real bad <laughs> habit for that. Uh, I'm, I'm taking it. I beat I beat Graham Hicks on the log. <laughs> yeah, it's <was> puny. <laughs> <laughs> Well, mate, it's been awesome to chat to you. I hope you have a brilliant yes, Christmas for the family. And, um, and uh, when you get back, we'll get some training in. We'll uh, see you at Sheffield, won't we? We will indeed, mate. All right, buddy. Thank you very, very much for talking to us. Hey, and I'll mate. see you soon. Take see it you, easy, buddy. buddy. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Obviously, really nice to catch up with Graham and have a chat with him. Let us know in the comments below if you like us doing these kind of things and you want to see us chatting to more athletes. Um, just comment below, give us a like, and we'll see you guys soon.